Welcome back to Fives a Crowd. Yeah. Ladies and gents. <laughs> that was perfect. Just <laughs> might as well roll right into it here. This it. is possibly our last, if, if my calculations are correct, I think this is our last episode for spooky season. <gasps> spooky. Unfortunately, Chris Papa is not with us today. Little bugger got ill. Um, yeah. Not but with us. You have so ominous sounding. I was gonna say he's well, not with us anymore. You made that sound He's not here with us here <laughs> in this very house. <laughs> but we're gonna pull out a Ouija board and he will be with us. <laughs> just kidding. We're not. Whoa. Oh, he's not, oh, he's not dead. He's pause, just not here. Pause. So I was doing the thumbnail for the Ouija board Uh-oh. podcast that we did a few weeks ago. So I had to pull up an image of a Ouija board, put it into my. Uh, Photoshop. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. I'm editing it behind your face. Okay. Do the planchette. <laughs> I am not kidding. No, my, I think my arrow was. Anyway, the freaking light above me starts flickering, dude. I Ooh, was freaking out. It never happens in this house. My lights never flicker. And it was like... Oh, I have this. That's what if your, what if your, mouse, your mouse cursor my starts mouse, to move? That's fantastic. Dude. I was creeped out. <laughs> that was creepy. Uh, I was creeped. I was creeped. Sorry, take it away. No, you're good. Oh my gosh. So today you have Cam, hey. Austin, hey. Zach, Hola. myself, Tony. And uh, to wrap up spooky season, we are going to talk about urban legends. <gasps> We've been kind of wanting to do this one for a bit. We're excited about it. Um, before we dive into that, though, we do just want to hurry and say, if you enjoy this, please subscribe. Um, if you're not into the spooky, ominous kind of stuff, we have a little bit of everything. Go check out our other stuff. Um, yeah, our, our spooky stuff is very seasonal. It is. <laughs> very spooky. <laughs> it's very spooky, but just for the season. It is. Yeah. I love it all year long, but <laughs> yeah. that's just me. Um, so anyway... Uh, Diving into it, anybody want to get started? I got gotcha. you. Oh, Great. alrighty then. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I, uh, I for most of the night, actually all the night, will be covering Japan. Japan. Japan's got some freaky Japan's stories, got some man. Crap going on over there. They got um, they got the oni and they got like the nine tailed fox and all that stuff. What are you talking? Nine tails? Is that yeah. where nine tails Pokemon yes, it comes is. from? It's a demon. Get out. Yeah, dude. It's a it's a fox demon that a foxy demon. It tricks you <laughs> into letting it eat your heart, and it has to eat like <gasps> ten hearts before it can become human. Get out. How yeah, does dude. it trick you into eating your heart? That's weird. It's it's creepy. It's anyway. a creepy little demon. Well, this first one I got is called Aka Monte or Monto. Which Make translates sure you pronounce it correctly. I don't know. Monto? <laughs> which translates into red cloak. Red cloak. Okay. Yes. Sounds like a Marvel character. <laughs> That's what we call oh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> so it says the story of this is uh, in the bathroom, a seeming, seemingly popular place for Japanese urban legends. Um, <laughs> Manto is a male spirit who dons a red cloak and a mask and is said to haunt school and public restrooms yeah. with a particular fondness for the last stall in the women's bathroom. Once you are seated in the stall, you will hear a male voice ask if you want red or blue paper. <laughs> Choose your words carefully. If you say red paper, you will meet a bloody end. And if you say blue paper, you will be suffocated to death until you're blue. <laughs> if you try to confuse the spirit by asking for a different color paper, you will be dragged into hell. Oh, my Oh, jeez. <laughs> to avoid a brutal end at uh, Ekamanto's hand... Simply refuse his offer and run away. Seems legit. Jeez. No, thanks. It's like Morpheus from hell. <laughs> you want the red <laughs> pill or the blue pill? The red paper or the blue paper? <laughs> Speaking of hell, they probably dragged him all the way to Russia, oh. where where oh. exists the well to hell. Oh. The well to hell. So according to legend, some Russian scientists were drilling in Serbia when they came across what nobody could explain while drilling this large hole that apparently went down about seven, seven-ish miles. That's the upside down. 
Right. Because it's in Russia, right? This, it's, in, it's in Russia. Yep, yep. Um, the scientists felt a surge of extreme heat radiate from the hole they were drilling. Oh, my gosh. And if they listened carefully, they could hear faint noises coming from within. When they tested the heat at the bottom of the hole, it came back about <laughs> 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Way hotter than it should have been uh, for their calculations and geez. stuff. They lowered a microphone down into the hole, into the well, and heard the sound, a sound they would never forget, the sound of human voices <sighs> crying out in agony. No. It was the most blood-curdling screams any of them have ever heard. The group quickly realized they had discovered a whale to hell. A whale to hell. A whale, <laughs> a whale to hell. <laughs> That's... That's, Ooh, that's gnarly, unsettling. dude. It's the upside down for sure. Got some dude. demogorgons down there. Oh, yeah. What's the name of that guy in the fourth season? Vecna. Vecna. Freaking Vecna. Freaking Vecna down there. Bro. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I need to play some master puppets. <laughs> Have you guys seen that yet? Yeah. Okay. What? Season Stranger four. Things? Yeah. No. Season four? Oh. Dude, that's Still another thing. On it. Speaking of the writer strike and all that crap, but push that back, too. The season, season five. five. Mm-hmm. Kids are going to be like 30 years old before That's it finishes. For real. Not with AI. Forever. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Tony. I want to hear yours. So I've, I just studied up on one. You're uh, boring. <laughs> well, I got a whole his, list. This is his idea. And he's like, I got one. And it's well, like hey, three sentences. In fairness, my idea was that we each pick one. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, this podcast is done in 15 minutes. Hey, it worked well with our Christmas episode. We That's each true. picked one. That's true. And it That's lasted true. all. That one was I'm just giving you crap. So, anyway, on November 15th, 1966. <sighs> Two young. November fifteenth is my wedding anniversary. Ooh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Two young couples from Point Pleasant, Roger and Linda Scareberry, and Steve Scareberry, Scareberry, Sc- Scarberry, Scareberry. Sounds like a Care Bear. <laughs> it's like Scareberry. I'm Care Scar-berry. Bear Scareberry. Scarberry, Scarberry. <laughs> yeah. And Steve and Mary Malay told police that they had seen a large black creature whose eyes glowed red standing at the side of the road near the TNT area, the site of a former World War II munitions plant. Linda Scarberry described it as a slender, muscular man about seven feet tall with white wings and said that she was unable to discern its face due to the hypnotic effect of its eyes. <gasps> Distressed, the witnesses drove away at high speed and said that the creature flew after their car, making a screeching sound. It pursued them as far as Point Pleasant city limits. During the next few days, other people reported similar sightings after local newspapers reported it. Two volunteer fire firemen who saw it said it was a large bird with red eyes. What is this thing? The thing from Jeeper Creepers? No. Yeah. This is the one and only Mothman. Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay. I always heard about the Mothman, but I, I knew Point Pleasant. Knew. I was like, I know that name. I know that yeah. place. Did you ever see the Mothman prophecies? Yeah. Oh, dude, that movie's great. It's yeah. so good. I Terrifying. Love that. I need to watch Richard that. Gear, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So the legend of Mothman, or legend has it that Mothman lives in the TNT area of Point Pleasant. According to legend, Mothman is a black 10-foot creature with wings and red eyes. Um, Is he the one that's also in The Boogeyman? Who? That old shit. Richard (laughs) Greer? No, the the Mothman. Isn't the Mothman in... The Boogeyman? No. What Boogeyman? There's it's like, like an old 2000s film. The I crap say. one? Oh, the one that's way good until you see the Boogeyman? Yeah. With Beale? Right? Isn't she? No, it wasn't Beale. It was the guy from Seventh Heaven, though. Oh. The big, her older brother. Yeah. In the show. Isn't that the okay. Mothman? No. no. No? I'm wrong on that? Yeah. Okay. I don't My think bad. so. Um, so, let me back up a bit here. 
I'm sorry, I lost my spot. So anyway, um, Mason County here? Sheriff George Johnson commented that he believed the sightings were due to an unusual large heron he termed a shite poke. <laughs> a shite poke? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a shite poke. <laughs> How would you pronounce that? Mm, right there. It's a shitty poke. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> Shite poke. Shapoke. Oh. Right there. Sh- shite poke. Yeah. Okay. Shite poke. I don't know. What I don't does know. that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> Here, do this. Can Google say it? Here, do this. Nope, that's shit poke. You want, you want <laughs> How am shite. I supposed to spell it? S H I T E. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is stupid. What is this? Uh, any of various herons. How do you pronounce it? There Shite you go. Poke. Oh, you Shite said it poke. right. That sounds too dumb to be real. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yeah, by definition, any, it's any of a number of birds of a heron family. A Weird. Shite poke. What a, <laughs> what a shite. What? A, who comes <laughs> up with this crap? You could be like Cam. He spelt it shit poke. <laughs> I, did. I, did. I hate it when that happens. Oh man, you got me. <laughs> that's called that's called gay. <laughs> <laughs> or when you have a turtle head, and that's a shit poke to me. It's <laughs> okay, it's groundhog. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's see. So additionally, he blamed uh, buzzing noises from his television set. Oh, wait. Nope. Sorry. I'm in the wrong spot. Contractor Newell Partridge told Johnson that when he aimed a flashlight at a creature in a nearby field, its eyes glowed like bicycle reflectors. Ugh. Additionally, he blamed buzzing noises from his television set and the disappearance of his German shepherd dog on the creature. Wildlife biologist Robert L. Smith at West Virginia University told reporters that descriptions and sightings all fit the Sandhill Crane, a large American crane almost as tall as a man with a seven-foot wingspan featuring circles of reddish-colored reddish coloring around the eyes. The bird may have wandered out of its migration route and therefore was recognized or unrecognized at first because it was not native to this region. It's not a bird. <laughs> it's a plane. <laughs> it's the Mothman. <laughs> um, this is the first newspaper report was published in Point Pleasant, dated yeah November 16th. So the couple, couple see the man-sized bird, creature, or something. Legend has it that Mothman lives in Tennessee. According to legend, Mothman is... Oh, come on. I've got a lot of repeats here. My bad. Um, did you do your always, research? He, <laughs> oh, dude, I did it all today, and I was half asleep for most of it. Well, doesn't he usually show up before tragedy? So happens. that's... Yeah. 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 So it was saying the most like notorious... Where is it? Gosh, I thought I had this... Uh, Okay, yeah, the most infamous sighting of Mothman was on December 15, 1967. Locals said they saw Mothman on top of or flying over the Silver Bridge, which was a suspension bridge over the Ohio River that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia, to Gallipolis, Gallipolis, Ohio. According to Mothman lore... Shortly after the creature was spotted on the bridge, the bridge collapsed, resulting in the death in the deaths of 46 people. Holy An investigation into the disaster found that a fracture in the suspension chain was the cause. Mothman has been allegedly sighted at other disastrous events since the bridge collapsed, with people claiming to have seen the creature before earthquakes, tsunamis, and even the 9/11 terrorist attacks. Wow. This leaves locals and storytellers split on whether Mothman should be considered an evil or benevolent creature. Some say the creature is either bad luck or causing these disasters in some way, but others speculate Mothman may be able to see the future and that the monster appears to warn people of impending doom. Mm. 
Well, you want to hear something wild? Yeah, let's hear it. Russia has an urban legend called the Blackbird of Chernobyl. Oh. The so, same thing as the Mothman? Basically. Like their version of it. A lot of people um, know about the horrific Chernobyl disaster, but most are unaware of the creepy circumstances some people were facing before it all happened. According to some of the survivors, shortly before the huge nuclear plant meltdown, they all started experiencing weird phenomena, including nightmares, threatening phone calls, which happened in like, at least in the Mothman prophecy, there were like weird oh, phone yeah, calls. Oh, yeah, yeah, I stuff, remember, remember that. They'd get the like, yeah, weird whispers and uh-huh. things. Yeah. Um, and encounters with a huge winged beast that came to be known as the Blackbird of Chernobyl. General accounts reported that it looked like a large creature-like man with huge wings and red eyes. Some people even reported it over one of the reactors as it went through the meltdown. People are quick to relate this apparent harbinger of doom to the legendary Mothman of West Virginia, which started showing up right after, right before the Silver Bridge collapse. The people describe these two beings as are so, wait the way the people describe these two beings are so similar that one is left to wonder if there really are creatures out there that show up when something bad is about to happen. So if you see a large scary bird man on the way to work, maybe just go home. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, dude. That's crazy. Right? And freaking, like, because Chernobyl was quite a, like, before that, what year was that? 67 was oh, the bridge. No, it was after then, wasn't it? In the 80s? Chernobyl? When was Chermo- Chernobyl? Uh, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. I, I want to say Chernobyl was in the 60s. Uh, in the 70s. It was. Wasn't it? I can't remember. Dude, we should cover Chernobyl. That stuff is bananas. Oh, yeah, especially all the cover-up and stuff. 85, 86. Oh, Oh, wow. Really? 86. Right? That was the year before we were born. Yeah, that's way crazy. That's the year I was born. That's the year he was born. A year old, I am. (laughs) She's cramped. That's crazy. Isn't that weird, though? I read that earlier, and I was like, holy crap. Freaking Mothman in Russia? Speaking yeah, of- I tried to research as much as I could to find out, like, the actual origins and everything, and everything led back to around that 1966 era. And so I'm like, so if he is, I don't know, this is one where it's like, if he is legit and real, then how come there isn't any more stories prior to that? Yeah. Well, but- it said 9-11, like... Yeah. What's the biggest disaster we've had since then? No, I'm saying, but before 1960. Oh. Like, like how come there wasn't any stories back then? But then again, I guess a lot of these... Maybe he was reincarnated. (laughs) They were all blind. (laughs) Speaking Mm -hmm. of a random side note, I saw this this little meme, and it was about 9-11. It was like, this graph tells a story, and it says, the sale of Jenga... The game, <laughs> and it's like flat, and then 2001, choo boom, and then it goes up. Like, <laughs> oh, I just got it. Holy crap. Oh my gosh, is that real? Wow. I don't know. Like, I... Nobody would buy it for like, like ugh, too soon. Wow. <laughs> Not playing this game. Before 2011, it came with a little plane toy you used to poke <laughs> the things out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh man. You ever, <laughs> you ever heard of the dream school? Oh, I was going to go. Go for it. I'll go for no, it. No, you go. go. We go. haven't heard from go. you. Go. All right. Go. Mine's, mine's a teaser. Oh, dream okay. school dream coming school. up. Ooh, stay tuned. <laughs> stay oh. tuned. Freddy so Krueger. this one, uh, this one, I don't know. It just sounds creepy. Okay. <laughs> Out in the deserty areas of the USA, there are roads that go insane distances with absolutely nothing nearby. No gas stations, no homes, just barren land. Long... Longest one I've been on was, if I recall correctly, 76 miles between a couple of towns in Oklahoma. There was a legit a sign that indicated no gas or rest the next stops, or the next stop was 76 miles away. Many of them are much longer. The legend is, is that people traveling on these long roads, especially at night, will see people on the side of the road, a hundred or more miles from anything. They look normal, wear normal clothes, except for they're nine, f- nine plus feet tall when you get close to them. Ugh. And a lot of truckers have reported seeing them in old threads on here. No. I think it's uncanny. I think it's an uncanny valley thing. Totally normal environment with one normal, normally insignificant detail, very out of place. 
So that was just a, a little Reddit thread that I they they call them stick Indians. Where did they see them? In Oklahoma. Ew. Ew. I've never gone to Oklahoma. Right? Oh, dude, didn't like reservation land oh, and stuff. I've some freaky stories. Messed yeah. Up. I think that'd be actually that brings up too. I think we could do a topic on like truckers. Like what oh, they see, like yeah. the weird stuff Crazy they see. Because I'm sure they've seen some weird stuff. Now and like Indians, like Native American lands. Yeah. What I one thing that this kind of the whole topic of urban legends, I feel this type of fear that we especially as kids had. Oh, without, yeah. Without, it's terrifying. Without, without tech, right? It's because because you really didn't have any sense of what the real world was, and I feel like as we get older, as technology progresses, as people get these mini computers in their hands and these high, you know, high def cameras, I feel like a lot of that folklore and urban legends and these sightings and hauntings all kind of start to die out a little bit as we get older, because it's your imagination just isn't there anymore. Absolutely. Like, and I feel like it with kids and teenagers, it's just not there. Like it was when we were younger. Right. It was that fat. It was, um, it was great. Cause it was that fascination with the unknown. And like, we were okay. Not knowing. Well, the truth. it's just that it was there like, was well, also it could no be. proof. I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on. Like the pure <laughs> thing of like signs, right? Uh-huh. The movie, the signs, when that came out, that was haunting. Oh yeah, oh, dude. It still is. Yeah. It's so and so, but it's just, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Is that like, I feel like as we progress, our like kids and younger generations aren't going to get near as scared or as into this kind of like creepy stuff as we were mm-hmm. and are. Yeah. You know, kind of like how tech kind of ruins scary (laughs) films or scary movies. Yeah, well, it's dumb. Like CGI isn't, yeah. Well, more so that like, oh, everyone's got service with cell phones. You know, how are you going to, oh, I don't have service in the mountain. Well, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, 4G. You know, or (laughs) like my battery's dead. No, you got got a phone that runs 48 hours. (laughs) You You got a battery in your backpack. It's like now horror films have to predate technology to kind of make you have that sense to make it more plausible or or make the situation stupid like oh i should call i'm in danger oh i left my cell phone in the rv yeah like so now you are left without a way what you talking about nobody leaves their phone anywhere (laughs) yeah well that's what's dumb too is i was doing doing some of this research you keep pulling up all these fact checking websites and they're like fact checking this urban legend there's no proof blah 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 it's like shut up yeah, like, I, I want to have fun. I, I don't, don't get care scared. if it's real or not, but the the fear of thinking it could be real is the fun. Yeah. See, that's like that's like me with Bigfoot. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of Bigfoot, and it's like I thought you were gonna say everybody knows it's not real, but no. I'm a big, <laughs> everybody no. knows I'm Bigfoot. It's it's actually quite the opposite. It's like I think he is real, mm-hmm. and you cannot say anything show me anything to prove otherwise because it's like there is just too much out there too much mystery to just 100 percent say no he does not exist and so it's but yeah all this kind of folklore stuff and yeah, that's the other thing too with the fact checkers i'm like where's proof how yeah. i'm just supposed to believe your word yes yeah. <laughs> did you see that latest? right that's what they the, want i think i said it yeah of the yeti and then later, in Colorado. It was, and then later, it was proven that that person was out on a Yeti hunt dressed oh, as Yeti. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one from the train? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. It's <laughs> so hilarious. good. He just sits down and. <laughs> oh, okay, funny. what's Dream School? Dream School. Let's hear it. So, according to this legend, if you don't forget this story within a week, it will oh. happen to you. Forgotten. <laughs> Got <it>. Deleted. So, <laughs> one night, a boy had a dream about a school. It was a school he didn't recognize. As he wandered the halls, he became increasingly unsettled. The hallway he walked down was a continuous loop, always bringing him back to where he started. He climbed stairs only to find himself back on the first floor. The school was a maze. He couldn't figure it out. And as he started to become scared, he heard the sound of footsteps behind him. The sound was faint and far away, but instinctively he ran. The footsteps got closer and closer. He found an emergency exit with the glass lock box then held the key right next to it, but the glass had already been smashed. The key was missing. In its place, there was a note that said the key was in room 108. The boy ran off in search of room 108. 
And when he found it, he shut the door behind him. There was no students, but there was a backpack hanging off every chair. He searched them all frantically, turning out the drawers of the teacher's desk, but it was no use. The footsteps caught up with him. Now someone was pounding on the door, and as the boy cowered, the pounding just stopped. The boy opened the door to the hallway, but quickly he wished he hadn't. The corridor was littered with children's corpses. Holy hell. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Their limbs scattered from end to end. He never woke up from his dream. <gasps> and if you don't forget this story in one week, you'll have the same dream and be reassigned to the same fate. Oh, my gosh. Phew. That caught me way off. <laughs> Holy <Wow>. crap. <laughs> Question. If he never woke up, how did he tell the story? It's a good question. <laughs> Ugh. Got him. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That Gosh. One, that's weird. That one took a real weird Right? Thing. This one's definitely not as gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's called The Buzzer. It's and it's this, not from Japan. This one is 100% legit. Okay. So it's a creepy tale right out of a science fiction show. Ooh. A Russian radio station nicknamed The Buzzer has been broadcasting and letting out a buzz about every other second since the 1970s. Ooh. Every few months, the buzzing is suddenly interrupted with a voice saying UVB76, followed by a series of numbers and code words. Then the buzzing starts again. No one has figured out what it means, but, the number, uh, but a number of theorists suggest that it's a secret military communication method or that it may even be a countermeasure for nuclear conflict. But this thing's been going on forever, and there is actually a recording of it. I can't remember. I found it once well, years ago on like some random YouTube video that was like creepiest sounds ever or whatever, and it's a, le a legit recording of this. And it's it just, did it say it's just that one specific radio? Yeah, it just well, not that like like there's a station. Oh, oh, it's a radio station. I got gotcha. you. And it always it's just like bzzz, like it buzzes and like kind of intermittent buzzes, and then randomly this kind of almost creepy like UVB Russian sounding voice. Let's see if we can let's see if we can find the sound. Uh, I wonder if that's where Lost got there. I think Remember from like season two, uh -huh. there was a weird thing going off. And then a was it season two? Anyways. Hmm. Russian buzzer sound. UBB76. It's a shortwave radio station. Creepy. Isn't that freaking weird? Oh, I've heard this. Uh -huh. Does it say it? I don't know. Ew, gross. Right? That sounds... Yeah, that does sound like something from Lost. Yeah. Oh, that makes me want to watch Lost again. I love that show. Let's see the... Let's see... Somehow, a bunch of... Because I guess... I mean, it's it's a shortwave radio, so like, if you have a ham radio and stuff, I'm sure you could just pick up the does sound. Does it have this station? Or like... The um, It's 4625 kilohertz. Hmm. I think... I don't know... Anything about? Oh yeah, there it is. It's a voice message, 2021. That's when it was recorded. So 
So that's that's the creepy thing is that was recorded in 2021. So like this has been going since the 70s. No so way. one, Do one. Do they know where it's coming from? No. Ew. How far Ew. does it reach? Everywhere. Really? Yes. yes. So I, I could pull out my phone and do it right now. I don't know if you could do it with your phone. I think you have to have like ham radio equipment. That's crazy. But like, the that's what blows my mind is like what, like what technology did they have back then that could still be running today? Yeah, I don't Who know. Who just like turned this thing on and it's just going? Or is it actually still a man station? Yeah. But it sounds crappy. Like it doesn't sound like a high quality communication. Like. Yeah. Sounds like some old technology. Jeez. They just don't build them like they used to. Eh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that freaking weird, though? I don't that is that. crazy. The buzzer. Ew. All right, I have one. Okay. This is black-eyed children. Yeah. Ew. Gross. Children are creepy in any context. <laughs> So any urban legend, including black eyed children, is bound to turn some heads. In the late 90s, a journalist named Brian Bethel was working in his town of Abilene, Texas, where he encountered something that he'll remember until his last day. He was parked outside a movie theater when two children knocked on his window. For reasons he couldn't understand, he was completely gripped with fear. He rolled down the window and asked the kids, or er, and the kids asked for a ride back to their house so they could get cash for the movie. His fear made him hesitant, but the kids were persistent. They kept saying weird things like how they weren't armed or anything. Once Bothell, once Bothell looked back at the kids. He was terrified to see that their eyes had turned pitch black. They started screaming at him and they could only come or they started screaming at him that they could only come in the car if he invited them in and he quickly drove away. As a journalist, he spread the word and was surprised when other people wrote back saying they had experienced sim something similar. Yeah. They're vampires. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that story. That's super creepy. I don't like it. I saw, this isn't an urban legend, but I saw these, this one Redditor and their list of life rules on a, on a urban legend subreddit. Mm -hmm. It's almost creepier than any of the urban legends will probably read. <laughs> My list of life rules are don't whistle in the dark. Don't let anyone take a photo of my corpse. Don't answer owl calls. What? Don't answer a door if I can't see anyone there. Don't speak aloud in empty rooms. And don't acknowledge if I hear something while alone. Something about grave robbing creatures and not to let them see you. Don't give things a name because it gives them power over you. Don't take photos of mirrors. Don't buy a mirror with paint on it or one that is kept covered. Keep windows covered at night. And if you feel something climb in your bed, don't face it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, <laughs> Those dude. are rules to live by, but yeah. I don't want to have to live by them. Oh, my them. gosh, that... That shouldn't have given me the chills, but right? Man. I read those earlier and I was like, dang, that's actually really creepy, dude. Gross. That's just someone, what someone wrote on Reddit? Yeah, it was. I was actually looking up, a, I don't remember what, I just came across it and I was like, that's Ooh, gosh, creepy, that's dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Gross. All right. But the thing is, is I can think of something bad that's happened with all of them pretty much. <laughs> yeah, right? You know what I mean? Like stories or yeah. movies or whatever. Yeah. Ooh, I don't like it. Okay. I've got I've got an urban one here. Okay. You don't mind. Go for it. All right. This one is uh the most upvoted on this particular subreddit that I found. I haven't read it, so we're all along for the ride. Girl goes to a club with another female friend. They party through the night and she actually connects with a guy and ends up kissing him, making out. They exchange contacts, but he wants her to go to his place. 
He gets quite desperate and tries to convince her. Sounds like every other Friday night so far. Her well, female with you and your wife. <laughs> I am quite desperate. <laughs> Her female friend gets wind of it, even though he seems all right. She urges him they'll part ways for the time being, since it's too late and they'll they're all drunk. They leave the club and go to each other's own place. Oh, and each go to their own place. The next morning, the girl doesn't feel quite well. While looking in a mirror, she also notices what looks like some form of rash or herpes around her mouth. She doesn't think much of it, but goes to the doctor anyways. The doctor isn't sure exactly what it is and suspects bacteria or a viral infection. He takes a tiny sample from her skin and sends it to the lab. About a week later, the doctor calls and wants the girl to come visit him ASAP. He tells her the results are very suspicious, something only really seen from contact with corpses. Oh! I had both shocked. The girl tells the doctor about the guy that she made out with at the club. After some additional research she did at home. Are you rattling the table? Sorry. (laughs) My phone's over here bouncing. I'm like, (laughs) trying to read it. Just giving everybody a seizure. (laughs) <laughs> After some additional research she did at home, she discovers the guy recently got arrested on suspicion of killing a girl with a couple weeks ago. Oh! They found a dead girl's body at his home under oh. his bed, laying there decomposing. Oh my gosh! So was, I heard, this is weird. I heard this exact story. So wait, was he doing like a stuff couple to days the girl ago? and then would go yeah. and uh, dead? Uh, yes. Uh, uh. Yes. Oh, see, I was taking this more paranormal. I thought he was dead. That's what I was no, thinking. No, no, he no. Was, but he yeah, was, he was a necrophiliac. necrophiliac. Right. Oh, god. That's so weird. I heard this, like, literally just the other day. I can't remember where now. <laughs> really? Yeah. If, if you don't oh. know what a necrophiliac is, we covered that in, like, two podcasts yeah, we don't, ago. You don't. <laughs> don't. Don't. You don't need a... Just you don't. don't. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> this is one of those things where curiosity will kill the cat. <laughs> yep. And then it will be defiled. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm so glad you remembered to... I told you. I got face? you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I double checked. I feel like I left <laughs> just enough in. I had to cover your face though, because I could read your lips so easily. Do you think it's possible someone left in the comments on there's that no one? Way, no there's way no way. There's no way. I read the comment too, and I was like, yeah. "There's no okay. way." They, they they want to sound cool and be part of the cool crowd, uh-huh. but they don't know. I don't know. There's I, no I way. wanted to call him out and be like, I'm, "Then what did I say?" <laughs> Put it in the comments. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> right? I, I was listening to that one, and all of a sudden I hear the wah 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 wah, and then you hear me go, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> Do you recognize the wah wah? Uh huh. Yeah, it's from Charlie Brown, isn't yeah. it? Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. <laughs> Man, ah, that, ah, that question still. I'm like, whew. Um, <laughs> Dude, everyone's reaction is great. <laughs> you got one? Yeah. So this chick. Oh, man, I don't know if anything's going to top that one. That one, that was a doozy to read. <clears throat> this chick is called Kushisaki Ana. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Shite poke. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, you just don't see your name right. She's coming for you. Uh, All right. Uh, oh, uh, gross. Uh, the yeah. ring girl. Someone just Oh, jumped. that was the grudge. Oh. That was the grudge. Oh, was Someone oh, dude, just steered into oncoming traffic. <laughs> dude, that, bro. I, I got that. Yeah. You got to be so careful listening to this Looked podcast. into the rear view mirror, saw that creepy uh-huh. little Asian kid. And, um, You're welcome. Someone was just like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> So, if you ever find yourself alone on a quiet, foggy street after dark in Japan, you should probably beeline for the nearest populated place because you might just encounter uh, this. Say your name. Kuchisakiana. <laughs> Kuchisakiana. You want a what? <laughs> Suzuki. <laughs> Habachi. Fuku, fuku. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, at first, you probably won't be too upset about running into the woman who seemed to just appear out of thin air right in front of you. She's gorgeous and demure, wearing a white surgical mask over her mouth. She asks you, am I beautiful? Oh, I Careful what you say. This. Careful what you say. You say yes, because she really is. She takes off her surgical mask for you, 
Her mouth has been slit from ear to ear. She asks, how about now? You, A, say no. She slices your mouth from ear to ear with a pair of scissors, giving you a beautiful smile just like hers. B, say yes. She allows you to leave and you think you've gotten off the hook, but when you arrive home, she appears again, killing you in your own doorway. Or C, say maybe. This confuses her. You run. She's so <laughs> flummoxed that she doesn't chase you and you escape. Do you think you would be composed enough to trick her or would you fall victim to a scissor wielding maniac? Good. Yes. I've heard this one yeah, before. I've heard that one too. Oh, gross. You want to know how I got these scars? Yeah. <laughs> Auto pops. <laughs> Auto pops. Yoko Shoko Menke, whatever. <laughs> I told her yes. <laughs> or told her no. I told her no. Here's one for you. My father. The collector. Ooh. Ooh. This urban legend revolving the collector in Russia actually has real world roots. In 2011... A man was apprehended in Russia after his shocking secret was discovered. He liked to dig up cadavers and dress up the remains to display all around his home. Oh, my god! In total, he dug up 29 ca cadavers. This absolutely <laughs> sickening Wait, event on. helped how spur the how urban you, legend. How do you dig up cadavers? This No, this part's true. He actually did it. He was arrested for it. Well, hold on. How do, how do you dig up a cadaver? Just dig a grave. Together. But a cadaver like a, like is science. A, like they well, donate their bodies. Still to bodies to a corpse, whatever. Corpse, cadaver. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Mm. Is a dead person. <laughs> okay. Um, the absolutely sickening, sickening event helped to spur on the legend of the collector, a mysterious figure who kidnaps people, slays them, and puts their mummified remains on display. The collector is known all over the world, but with such a creepy true story coming from Russia... The legend looms largest there. Yee. So there's, yeah, so there's the urban legend, which is he kidnaps you, kills you, displays you, and then the true story of a dude digging up dead people Gross. and displaying them in his house. Yee. Dude, freaking Russia, man. Bro, oh, they, they're Russia's, wild. Russia's wild. Freaking wild. All right, I got a short one. I saw you were mouthing right as I was. Yep, you're good, though. Okay. I'll go after this you. This one's short. Ooh. <laughs> And then not, Zach will go after me. <laughs> not sure if this is an urban legend, but it's scary as hell, at least to me. My grandmother used to tell, tell it to all the kids in the neighborhood. My very Greek grandmother was incredibly superstitious. She always told me, whatever you do, never speak aloud in the dark. One time I asked why. Because someone might just answer you. Oh, no. Oh, okay. That's like kind of like two sentence. Yeah. Things, like, well, and that was also on the list you read earlier. Yeah. Um, it's on also the list, like it that. Said, yeah. Don't talk in the dark or speak yeah. aloud. It's that. What is that weird phrase where it's like, <laughs> be careful staring into the abyss because the abyss might stare back. Oh, gross. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I don't like right. it. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is the legend of Catherine near Bangor, Maine. Local Maine folklore tells of a woman called Catherine, named after a nearby mountain who wanders Route 182 between 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 <laughs> between it says between twice between the towns of Franklin and Cherryfield. Is like, it, is it Kathy Bates with those squirrels? Right. <laughs> you should have bought a squirrel. <laughs> like many phantom hitchhikers, Catherine perished in a car accident along this stretch of road and is now cursed to walk its length for all eternity. But there's a twist to this I iteration. The poor young woman is said to have been decapitated. Oh. And some who have seen her spirit insist she walks without a head. And that's not the only terrifying aspect of Catherine's tale. The legend goes, if you do not stop to help the ghost, Catherine will hex you and bring about pain, suffering, or even death. 
some tell of an incident involving a motorist who refused to stop for Catherine, only to glance in his rearview mirror to see her severed head resting in his back seat, oh, causing him to crash his car and suffer the same fate she did. Oh. Decapitation? Jeez. F that. That's gross. I like it. Oh. That's a good one. That's a good one. Spine tingler. Um, you ever hear about the girl from The Gap? Like, not the clothing store. store. <laughs> That's, That's what I was going to ask. Not she was the clothing dressed store. very trendy in the 90s? Yes. The girl with The Gap? So. In the teeth? <laughs> do you know that small gap between your dresser and the wall? Gross. No. Go. Oh, oh, next. Gosh. Nope. Or, <laughs> from now on, my, my dresser is completely against the wall all the time. Or between your bed and the floor. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Nope. Mm. Don't look in there because if you see a pair of eyes staring back at you, you're in trouble. The first time you see the girl looking at you from a small gap, golly, I just got the chills. I was going to say, I got uh, chills. She'll ask you if you want to play hide and seek. You don't really have a choice. Even if you say no, you're still locked into her game which isn't so much a game as it is an exercise in never letting your eyes lock on a gap ever again. If you see her a second time, she'll drag you down to hell. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that could be a horror movie. Right? That's a good one. Because could you imagine you see her once, and you're like, oh, no. And then like the rest of you are like, you're like don't, <laughs> you look, at don't look at the gaps. <laughs> don't look at the gaps. The only way to get her back is if you get her with one of these. (laughs) (laughs) Who's that? (laughs) Oh, I got you. (laughs) Damn it, Dory. Not today. I'm too busy. (laughs) I got stuff to do. (laughs) Oh, that one's gross. You walk past the clothing store looking the other way. I'm not taking any chances. (laughs) (laughs) There she is. The gap girl. (laughs) Have you guys ever heard of the Russian sleep experiment? Is this the yes. yes? Is this the gas chamber thing? Yeah. Ooh, read it. It's so good and it freaks me out every time. Yeah, I've heard of it. Do you remember? Do you, do you remember this? No. Oh, oh my to get goodness. Your pants a shaking. <laughs> so <There> you are. <laughs> there's a, there's an urban legend known as the Russian sleep experiment. According to the story, hide the screen. I don't want him reading it. <laughs> yeah, quit reading. I'm sorry. I just like to follow along. Look at Austin. <laughs> Look at the gap. <laughs> According to the story, <laughs> researchers in the 1940s took five prison inmates and locked them in an airtight chamber with special gas to keep them awake. This gas was had some sort of stimulant, was to keep them awake. They were experimenting to see the effects of sleeplessness on people. Well, these prisoners um, were also basically they were like political prisoners, and they were told if they did the experiment for 30 days, they'd be released without repercussions. So they wanted to see the effects of prolonged sleep deprivation and promised the subjects they'd free them after 30 days. On the fifth day, paranoia started to set in and they stopped talking to one another. So they were only in there for five days. They didn't have any kind of closed circuit television or anything. They could only listen to them through... um, a series of microphones that were placed inside. Ooh, gross. You have audio, right? Isn't that it's, there's a short video, but it's not, it doesn't exploit everything. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. It's real long. Um, but this is one of my favorite creepy stories ever. Like it is. So, so you going to read all this. I'll read, I'll, I'll read the majority of it. Cause okay. it's just too good. Okay. You can follow along if it keeps you in the story. There we go. So oh, I'm in the story already. Oh, you following it on your phone? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can't look at the like, TV. Here fine, we go. I can't look at the TV. I'll pull it up on my phone. <laughs> so it was 1940s. Um, they kept five people awake for 15 days using an experimental gas-based stimulant. They were kept in a sealed environment. Isn't to- that like likely to kill you? Like 15 Maybe. days of no sleep? I've heard that. Which, like, well, shuts they, your brain off. Well, but it's a drug. They didn't know. Yeah, they were kept They're up with testing. this drug. This is Nazi Germany, baby. Or Russia. Nazi Russia. <laughs> <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't end so well for them. <laughs> but um, they were carefully monitored. They carefully monitored their oxygen intake so the gas didn't kill them. They, since it was toxic in high concentrations. This was before closed circuit cameras, so they had only microphones and a five inch thick glass porthole sized window into the chamber to monitor them. 
The chamber was stocked with books, cots to sleep on, but no bedding, running water and toilet, and enough dried food to last all five for over a month. The test subjects were political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. There's your Nazi Russians. Yep. Everything was fine for the first five days. Subjects hardly complained, having been uh, promised falsely that they would be freed if the, if they submitted to the test and did not sleep for 30 days. Their con- conversations and activities were monitored, and it was noted that they continued to talk about increasingly traumatic incidents in their past. And the general tone of their conversations took on a darker aspect after the four-day mark. After five days, they started to complain about the circumstances and events that led them to where they were and started to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to each other and began alternately whispering into the microphones one-way mirror and one-way mirror port- portholes. Oddly, they all seemed to think they could win the trust of the experimenters by turning over their comrades, the other subjects in captivity with them, or that's who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, at first, the researchers suspected this was an effect of the gas itself. But after nine days, the first of them started screaming. He ran the length of the chamber, repeatedly yelling at the top of his lungs for three hours straight. Oh he continued gosh. attempting. Oh, it's going to get you. <laughs> it's going to get you, Zach. It's going to get you good. He almost had you. Are you going to reenact what was happening? Well, I was gonna, you kind of did a little bit because Cam stopped talking and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> um, he screamed three hours straight. Uh, he continued attempting to scream after that, but was only able to produce occasional squeaks. The researchers postulated that he had physically torn his vocal cords. Oh, oh. good heavens. The most surprising thing about his behavior is how the other captives reacted to it, or rather didn't react to it. They continued whispering into the microphones until the second of the captives started screaming. The two non-screaming captives took the books apart, smeared page after page with their own feces, pasted it calmly over the glass porthole. The screaming promptly stopped once the hole was covered. So, so did the whispering into the microphones. They just stopped making noise altogether. After three more days passed, researchers checked the microphones hourly to make sure they were working. Since they thought it, thought it impossible that no sound could be coming out, could, could be coming with five people inside. The oxygen consumption in the chamber, chamber indicated that all five must still be alive. In fact, it was the amount of oxygen five people would consume at a very heavy level of strenuous exercise. Ew, gross. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers did something they said they would not do to get a reaction from the captives. They used the intercom inside the chamber, hoping to provoke any response from the captives they were afraid were either dead or vegetables. They announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you your immediate freedom. To their surprise, they heard a single phrase in a calm voice response. We no longer want to be freed. Oh, my gosh. Debate broke out among the researchers and the military forces funding the research. Unable to provoke any more responses using the intercom, it was finally decided to open the chamber at midnight on the 15th day. 15. The chamber was flushed of the stimulant gas and filled with fresh air immediate and immediately voices from the microphones began to object. Three different voices began begging as if pleading for the life of a loved one to turn the gas back on. The chamber was open and the soldiers sent in to retrieve the test subjects. They began to scream louder than ever. And so did the soldiers when they saw what was inside. Four of the five subjects were still alive. Although no one could rightly call the state of that, uh, could call the state that any of them in life. The food rations past day five had not been so much as touched. There were chunks of meat from the dead test subject, thighs and chest stuffed into the drain in the center of the chamber, blocking the drain and allowing four inches of water to accumulate on the floor. Precisely how much of the water on the floor was actually blood was never determined. 
Oh, my all four surviving test subjects also had large portions of muscle and skin torn away from their bodies. The destruction of flesh and exposed bone in their fingertips indicated that the wounds were inflicted by hand, not with teeth. Uh. As the researchers initially thought. Closer examination of the position and angles of the wounds indicated that most, if not all of them, were self-inflicted. Gross. The abdominal organs below the rib cage of all four test subjects had been removed. Oh, While the gosh. heart, lungs, and diaphragm remained in place, the skin and most of the muscles attached to the ribs had been ripped off, exposing the lungs through the rib cage. All the blood vessels and organs remained intact. They had just been taken out and laid on the floor. <laughs> Fanning out around the eviscerated but still living bodies of the subjects, the digestive tracts of all four could be seen to be working digesting food. It quickly became apparent that what they were digesting was their own flesh oh. that they ripped off and had eaten oh. over the oh course of days. Oh. Most of the soldiers were Russian special operatives at the facility, but still many refused to return to the chamber to remove the test subjects. They continued to scream to be left in the chamber and alternatively begged and demanded that the gas be turned back on lest they fall asleep. To everyone's surprise, the test subjects put up a fierce fight in the process of being removed from the chamber. One of the Russian soldiers died, having his throat ripped out. By one of the patients? Uh-huh. Another was gravely injured by having his testicles ripped off <gasps> and an artery in his leg severed by one of the subject's teeth. Oh. Another five soldiers lost their lives, if you count the ones that committed suicide in the weeks following the incident. <laughs> In the struggle, one of the four living subjects had had his spleen ruptured, and he bled out almost immediately. The medical researchers attempted to sedate him, but this proved impossible. He was injected with more than 10 times the human dose of morphine derivative and still fought like a cornered animal, breaking the ribs and an arm, and arm of one doctor. When Hart was seen to beat for a full two minutes after he had bled out, but the point where was more air in his vascular system than blood, even after it stopped, he continued to scream and flail for another three minutes, struggling to attack anyone in reach oh and just repeating the word more over and over, weaker and weaker, until he finally fell silent. The surviving three test subjects were heavily restrained and moved to a medical facility. The two with intact vocal cords continuously begged for the gas demanding to be kept awake. The most injured of the three was taken to a surgical operating room that the facility had. In the process of preparing the subject to have his organs placed back within his body, it was found that he was effectively immune to the sedative they gave him to prepare him for surgery. He fought furiously against the restraints. When the antiseptic gas was brought to put him under, he managed to tear most of the way through a four-inch wide leather strap on his wrist even through the weight of a 200-pound soldier ho holding the wrist as well, it took only a little more than more anesthetic than normal to put him under, and the instant his eyelids flutters and closed, his heart stopped. In the autopsy, the test subject that died on the operating table, it was found that his blood had tripled the normal level of oxygen. His muscles that were still attached to his skeleton were badly torn, and he had broken nine bones in his struggle to not be subdued. Most of them were from the force of his own muscles that his own muscles had exerted on them. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Heck. Dude, this is legit like a like a monster. Whole, right? Oh, my You know gosh, what it reminds me of is what's that movie with the zombie soldiers? Uh, oh, during Overlord? Overlord, oh, that's yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's kind of what this... Fantastic. Those with those creep... Yeah, they were like experimenting on their soldiers with... Yeah. I mean, I mean all the... All the Nazis essentially had meth. Yeah. yeah. Like they ran on meth constantly. Um, the other two subjects were given the same surgery, both with anesthetic as well, although they had been had to be injected with a paralytic for the duration of the operation. The surgeon found it impossible to perform the operation while the patients laughed continuously. Once paralyzed, the subjects could only follow the attending researcher with their eyes. The paralytic cleared their system in an abnormally short period of time, and they were soon trying to escape their bonds. The moment they could speak, they were again asking for the stimulant gas. The researchers tried asking why they had injured themselves, why they had ripped out their own guts, and why they wanted to be given the gas again. Only one response was given, I must remain awake. 
Oh my heck. <sighs> I have, I haven't I've never heard the remainder of this. Yeah. Every the story that I had heard ended with that uh leave us in here or whatever. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. That's this is insane. The crazy thing is is how they it was saying that the room was so quiet that they kind of questioned if they were dead and it's mm -hmm. like during those quiet times they're tearing themselves apart. Uh -huh. So they're doing it without even making a sound. Yeah, not screaming they're just like Ugh. Oh my gosh, Gross, dude! <laughs> Isn't there? There's a picture, and I don't know if it's a fake picture or not, but I thought there was a picture yeah. affiliated of a guy yeah. in yeah. the chamber, right? And and he's like, his eyes are like sunken back in his eye sockets. He almost looks like he doesn't have any lips. Like mm -hmm. he looks like a creature. Yeah, I've seen but. the picture. They did. They did debunk that picture. Oh, okay. I want to. But I want to hear the rest of this. I know I'm what sorry. you're talking about. Um, okay, so after that. After he says, I must remain awake. All three subjects' restraints were reinforced and they were placed back into the chamber, awaiting determination as to what should be done with them. The researchers facing the wrath of their military benefactors for having failed the stated goals of their projects, project considered euthanizing the surviving uh, subjects. The commander, commanding officer and ex-KGB instead saw potential and, and wanted to see what would happen if they were put back on the gas. Oh my. The researchers strongly objected, but were overruled. In preparation for being sealed in the chamber again, the subjects were connected to EEG monitors and had their restraints padded for long-term long -term confinement. To everyone's surprise, all three stopped struggling the moment it was let slip that they were going back on the gas. It was obvious that at this point, all three were putting up a great struggle to stay awake. One of the subjects that could speak was humming loudly and continuously, the mute subject was straining his legs against the leather bonds with all his might, first left, then right, then left again, and for something to focus on. The remaining subject <clears throat> was holding his head off his pillow and blinking rapidly, having been the first to be wired to the EEG. Most of the researchers were monitoring his brain waves in surprise they were normal most of the time, but sometimes flatlined inexplicably. It looked as if he... The, he were repeatedly suffering brain death before returning to normal. Oh As they focused on paper scrolling out of the brainwave monitor, only one nurse saw his eyes slip shut at the t same moment his head hit the pillow. His brainwaves immediately changed to that of deep sleep, then flatlined for the last time as his heart simultaneously stopped. The only remaining subject that could speak started screaming to be sealed in now. His brainwaves showed the same flat lines as one who had just died from falling asleep, as the one who had just died from falling asleep, the commander gave the order to seal the chamber and both subjects inside, as well as three researchers. That sucks. Gross. One of them, na one of the named three, immediately drew his gun and shot the commander point blank between the eyes. Then turned the gun on the mute subject, blew his brains out as well. He pointed the gun at the remaining subjects, still restrained to the bed, as the remaining members of the medical and research team fled the room. I won't be locked in here with these things, not with you. He screamed at the man strapped to the table. What are you? He demanded. I must know. The subject smiled. Have you forgotten so easily? The subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The researcher paused, then aimed at the subject's heart and fired. The EEG flatlined as the subject weakly choked out, so nearly free. Gross. Oh my gosh. Demons. <laughs> oh. All right. Nasty. Gross. Jeez. That photo Ugh. Um, Show them that, that one. Yeah, I don't That's like that so photo. so gross, dude. dude. Those masks are so creepy. All right. Well, that's gross. definitely a good note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got him. Gosh, good got story, good Cam. <sighs> do you want to do it? Yeah. Do it. Okay. Give it do to it. us. One more. Take it away. Do it. Do it. All right. <clears throat> Have you ever heard a story so scary that it made you catatonic? Speaking to your mic. Am I not? No, it's like, it was like no. angled. <laughs> I was speaking Hello? It this way. Hello? Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I'll speak like this straight into the mic. No. Um, have you ever heard a story so scary that it made you catatonic? Mm. And when you woke up, you were foaming at the mouth? 
What about a story so scary that it ended your life? Well, okay, you probably wouldn't know if you had experienced the second one, but that first one is pretty common experience, right? Oh, what? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> the story of the Gozu is a legend within a legend, according to the tale. A story called the Gozu, or Cowhead, appeared in Japan around the 17th century. It was so horrific that almost all copies of it were destroyed. Those unlucky enough to read or hear it trembled and shook for days before dying of fright. Only fragments of the tale remain to this day. Another version of the story holds that a school teacher was taking his students on a field trip. Tired of their chaotic behavior on the bus, he decided to try and get their attention by telling them horror stories. He had read part of the cowhead story in the past and repeated that small section to children. He only meant to frighten them a little bit, but they began convulsing and begging him to stop. He couldn't pause, though. His eyes turned white, but he continued, telling parts of the story he had never heard before, saying unspeakable things, losing all control as the children screamed. He awoke a few hours later. The bus was in a ditch. The driver was slumped over the steering wheel, shaking, and the kids, they were all unconscious, foaming at the mouth. Uh, what was the story? Doesn't tell the story. No, oh, come this on. This is just a tribute. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Creepy. the ring. Oh. Don't say it. Don't think it. Don't say it. Don't think it. <laughs> um, I go for one more. I'll go for <laughs> okay. one more. I, I like these Japan tales. This All was right. one I read. Japan's a freaky too, place, so. but I want to go so bad. Is that where the forest is? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude. Yes. Suicide forest? Yeah. So, one more. Uh, this story starts with a tragedy. Girl accidentally pushed off the platform at a train station just as the train was pulling in, was cut in half, and perished on impact. Mm. Sometime later, a boy was walking home from school alone. He saw a girl through a window. She was leaning on the windowsill with her elbows looking outwards when she saw the boy she pushed herself through the open window there was nothing the boy could do except stand there horrified he had just seen a girl fall from a window and on the other and on any other day that probably would have been his low point it might have even been the low point of his whole life if if he got to live it see after the girl hit the ground the boy realized something she had no lower body as he was trying to process this, the girl pushed herself up with her hands oh and started gosh. crawling toward the body. Oh, no! She was at his feet before he had time to run. He didn't even realize what she was carrying until the Sith was midway through his waist. At, as the two halves of his body fell to the ground, it was, around, it was the sound that she made as she dragged herself toward him. The techy techy that he had heard last. No. Oh Dude, my gosh. I did that creeps me out. Bro. <laughs> I just have this image of her like Yeah. And the sound. Yeah. yeah. Like the sound yeah, the of, like gravel. Yeah, teak, oh, teak. that's that sound? Yeah. yeah. Okay, like, grow. Oh just. no. Uh-uh. Oh. oh my gosh. All right. Okay. I'll end it there. Whew. All right. Whoa, that was a good creepy Lots one. Lots of spine tingling. This was a, this, this was good. This was I a lot of like the creepies. I like good. it. Well, thank you all so much for joining us yeah. for spooky season. Yes. Real quick, I want to ask if there are any local urban myths or urban legends in your area, please put them down below. I yes. would love to read over. Oh them. yeah. Heck yeah. That stuff's for so real. fascinating. Like we got flow here. Oh, yeah. yeah. We could have totally done a whole thing about local stuff. We already did. I think we have. We did have. we? About yep. mm. you, like last a couple Halloween years ago. or the Halloween before that, yeah. It was the first one, yeah. 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 Well, we could have redone it. We, Rehash it. We, 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 we could evolved. always do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what Hollywood's all about, right? It's just remakes. Yeah, now. exactly. Regurgitate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Higher quality. Or even better, other than just telling your local urban legends, I want to hear if you guys have seen things. Like as yeah. far as more than just paranormal ghosts and things, because uh, people mean, from Jersey, have you seen the devil in oh the yeah, forest? The Jersey devil, bro. Dude, if you've been there. Wild. Tell me about it. Or that chupacabra. Wild. Oh yeah, chupacabra. Some goat but, suckers. Yeah, that anyway. stuff's so crazy. Before before we go, I just wanted to say out loud. Um, my sister today was telling me that there's a 
uh, mountains up in Montana called the Crazies. Have you ever heard of them? Uh -oh. I had never heard of them either. And she was saying that kind of up by where she lives up there, it's this, uh, they're, it's this like, yeah, it's this line of mountains. They're not connected to any other set of mountains. And the like Native Americans of the area say it's cursed because of that. Like these mountains just look like they're kind of just popped up out of nowhere. Really? They're and, not on like a fault line or anything? I don't know. Like I, I just heard about it today, so I haven't full on like researched it. But she said they just kind of stand alone and they're really tall and just kind of. They look like that. Oh, there you go. Oh, weird. A dramatic island of mountains in central Montana. But she said they're they have a lot of spooky stories and Let's stuff go there. because they're. Let's do it, dude. I middle. love Montana, dude. It's so oh, gorgeous. I wanna, up I've there. never been. I want to so dude, bad. I've heard it great is things. Yeah, gorgeous. Montana's fantastic. I've just been to like the Yellowstone side of it, dude. It's so. I haven't actually been like up into it, but I'm telling you, man, guys trip. You go somewhere. You shoot some guns. But do we have a hashtag tonight? Hashtag spooky. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever you want. I feel like hashtag hashtag Japan. Tiki Tiki. Tiki 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 we're glad you put up with us. It's a late night for us. So. It is a late night. One um, twenty-two a.m. If you if you haven't <laughs> noticed, I kind of have been like, we got a nod. Oh, I, I have been <laughs> nodding, <laughs> and that is because I am now on twenty-two hours of being awake. Woo so, what a trooper! Yeah, been uh, well done. But you get to sleep in, right? No. Oh, I, gotta, I mean, open. kind of. I, I got to be up at, at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's not bad. That's not horrible. Me too. I was up at 6 a.m. I'm not doing math at this time. Yeah. Nope. Okay. It's night-night time. Yep. <laughs> All right, dude. Love you guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. And uh, thanks Th for being part of this crowd. Ciao. Bye. Sorry, I was waiting for you to say it. You didn't say it. about to. <laughs> <laughs> say what? Your mama. Oh.